Let's go back to the writing process with you and Melissa. So what was going on in your life when you started coming up uh, with ideas for All I Want? I, mean, I know she, it's her idea for the story initially, right? Yeah, yeah. She, she, um, I was in the middle of um, finishing a, a full-length play, um, oh, yes. and I was in the middle of workshopping that play um, because there was a story in that that I wanted to work out, and I you know, was doing that. And so, you know, when she first approached me, my mind was really in, in, in another story in, in terms of, you know, my writing. Um, you know, and as an actor, I really was kind of taking myself out of things a little bit because I just, for whatever reason, just gotten kind of um, disenchanted with, with the process of, 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 of an actor's life, you know. So I started really was writing something to produce and direct um, and when she approached me um, there was something about the story that you know both both Melissa and I are big fans of ensemble movies and so that was our initial kind of connection we're, we're fans of ensemble films and I also think that the theme of what we're trying to talk about in this movie is a really important theme for me and for her, this idea of, you know, people in the modern American city right now, I feel like, uh, at least certainly in Los Angeles, you know, there's this kind of undercurrent of stress and anxiety and, absolutely. and, and depression that people yeah. don't talk about. You, you know? see it, though. You absolutely you feel see it. it. You, you feel, feel it. it. You <laughs> bump up against it. Yeah. And I'm not necessarily talking about clinical disorders of anxiety or depression or things like that. I'm talking about the garden variety kind of, you know, garden variety kind of weight of, of anxiety, of stress, of depression. Um, and that is, for me, it feels like is a very untalked about you know, um, area of modern life, you know, people who are trying to figure out what kind of jobs, you know, they want to have. Um, do they want to switch careers? Do they want to get married and have kids? Do they, are they happy with their partner, um, with, with their, you know, families? Um, and I think thematically that was something that we both wanted to kind of, you know, pull apart and, 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 and examine. And I think that's the wonderful thing about this film is that um, it's got amazing performances, you know, across the board. Um, there's amazing technical kind of, you know, prowess in terms of cinematography and editing and, and, and composition. Um, I'm certainly proud of my work as a director, and Melissa and I are very proud of it as producing partners and someone who kind of collaborated to make the script happen. But thematically, I think it's an interesting thing to talk about for the audience that we don't already talk about right now. Right, I know there is a taboo because yeah. people want to just make it, no, nobody wants to get too heavy about mm -hmm. anything, but I sense it and living in LA as long as I have, I've yeah. seen the change yeah. and I don't know if it's just because it's busier here, but on a side note, and we can take this out if you if you don't want to talk about it, but where you live, and I won't say where it is, but it's removed In from the Hollywood Hollywood. Hills. Well, well <laughs> it's removed from Hollywood. Yeah. And you have a lovely place here, by the way, mm -hmm. and I can see why you would want to be here, mm -hmm. because it's not part of the industry. But you are so creative, mm -hmm. and you do produce things. Right. You don't just talk about them. You have a body of work. Why choose some place that's not in the heart of the industry? Well, it wasn't initially by choice, you know, it was, it, it was based on so many different factors in terms of where you want to put yourself, where you want to make your nest, per se, a lot, oftentimes when you don't have all the resources that you want to have, you know. Um, but I think as a result of all these different factors forcing me to make a decision, um, I'm able to kind of have a home that feels a little bit kind of you know, on the outskirts of the hub of, you know, Hollywood. And I think that gives me a certain sense of, I don't know whether it's distance or peace from it or whatever, you know, um, having, having some quiet time, you know, to, to work on whatever you want to work on. 
Um, so. So you don't feel that pull to be in, in sort of the hub where there's all this? No, no, yeah. no, no. I mean, not anymore. I think when I first moved down to LA, it was really important for me to kind of be surrounded by, you know, where everything is happening, you know, and that was exciting for, for many years. And I think now it's kind of nice to sort of like be around that, have access to that, but then also be a way, be, you know, ha have the ability to kind of like tuck yourself away um, and, and, and not be surrounded by that. Are you more creative in the daytime or nighttime? Definitely in the daytime. Yeah, I think so. I'm more of a morning, morning person. Um, and I think that's, I don't know whether Melissa has ever complained about it. I don't think so. But every time we would have meetings, I would always be like, let's do it eight in the morning, you know? And she was like, yeah, sure. You know, I think that's also kind of interesting too, because, you know, I'm, as a side note, I'm collaborating on another project with someone else who's a night person, you know, and, and, and that's like, <laughs> in some interesting ways, that's kind of caused some, you know, friction because I'm like, you know, after 8, 8 p.m., you know, my mind sort of just relaxes and sure. it starts to think about other things, you know, and, and I kind of want to eat and I kind of want to watch a movie. I kind of want to just, you know, uh, maybe go to the gym and, 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 and do nothing, you know, um, and during the day, I'm really productive. And, and for, for this other person, it's the opposite. The opposite. You know? Interesting. So, yeah, I don't know what... I, I, it would be interesting to take a tally to see, you know, where people are. Are they morning? Are they night person? You know, and also their collaborators. Are they, are they the same or opposite? What about you? Are you a morning uh, creative person? Or are you... I would say I get much more done after a cup of coffee right. and in the morning, in the and morning. then past a certain point, You're just done. I, I'm just done, right. and I, I don't. Nothing is worse than being behind a computer when it's like 2 a.m. Right, and I can't see straight, and I don't. That's not my, where my best self lies. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so I, yeah. I get that, but yeah. I know there's some people that come alive at night. Yeah. And I, I just think we're just hardwired differently and yeah. that there's just no right way. I mean, you hear these entrepreneurs that get up at like 4.45 and they right. take a cold shower and they're <laughs> ready and they're doing their, you know, wheatgrass smoothie. And that's right. great. I don't think I can do 4.45, but everybody has their yeah. own process. But then there's some people that fool themselves and that's the trick I worry about. I, I think, I, I definitely think that, that, that the footnote to that question is, is really like, you know, uh, when, when do your inspirations kind of come? And for me, they come all over the place and any time, but oddly it comes at night, you know, it comes at night often as well. I just think that you let it sit, you know, inspiration comes to you, ideas, you know, come to you and you sort of let it, let it sit around in your head. You know, and 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 you can't really actively do anything about it. It's for me, I you know, I, I just sort of let it sit, and then I will actually try to, you know, execute on an idea during the day. You know. Did you grow up in the big city? I grew up in the suburbs of the San Francisco Bay Area. You know, I mean, worked and played in in the city, but it was suburbia. You know, um, but now L.A. You know, I mean, I mean, L.A. is unique in some ways, you know, in, in the sense that there's so many kind of like ambitious people coming here to do uh, what seems to me like an impossible kind of task of making your living as an artist, you know. And so I think maybe with that, maybe with, you know, where the country is or whatever, you know, or expectations or all these kinds of different things um, cause anxiety in the city, you know, cause anxiety um, in people who are kind of expected to get married or expected to make a certain amount of money in their jobs or expected to do certain things um, and, and, and how that bumps up against, you know, what they are able to do. Yeah, I think the money part yeah. is, is a huge factor in the city. Yeah, being able to afford, you know, um, where to live and, and, 
it's tough, you know. You know, I mean, it's 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 a really kind of, and which is why I think, um, you know, for me, I wanted to really kind of explore that in this movie because this movie is very much about friendship. It's about family. It's about love, modern love, and life, and and all those kinds of things. Um, and there's a lot of humor in this story. There's a lot of fun moments in the story that I think the audience can really kind of like enjoy. They can see themselves and their friends and their family uh, in the characters in this movie. But I think at the same time, it also starts a conversation about that, you know, about anxiety. <laughs>